I changed our world up from the last video. I put this cube here in the center of the world. The cube has no model to world matrix transforming the cube into the world. There's a light somewhere up here. Hopefully that makes sense. The top of the cube is nice and lit. The light's hitting the top of the cube. It looks pretty good. The side of the cube gets a little bit of light, but not as much light as the top of the cube. And then this side of the cube looks like it only has ambient, maybe a little bit of diffuse. Probably mostly just ambient. So anyway, I want you to look at these edges on the cube. Aren't they nice and defined? Look how well defined those edges are. We can see the definition of the edges in the cube, especially right here where we have one, two, three faces all meeting. We can see that nice defined edge. And the reason why that is is because of the surface normals. Recall that we have three vertices here. We process three vertices separately. One vertex is considered the top of the cube or part of the top of the cube and its normal goes like that. There's another vertex on this side of the cube and its surface normal goes like that. And then there's another vertex on this side of the cube and its normal goes like that. And we have to have those normals like that or else the dot products and cosines don't give us the right results. We don't see that hard edge of the cube. I want to try an experiment. I want to show you a little bit of a difference. Pretend we can see directly into the center of this cube. I'm going to guess the origin would sit right about here. The center of the cube would be right there. And then all the vertex positional vectors would be like this. Here's one to that vertex and one to that vertex. One down here, one over here, and then another one right there. And I believe it's like one, one or something. I can't remember the position, the, what numbers I use for these vertices. You can go look at the data yourself and figure that out. But I want to use the position as the vertex normal. So I'm going to take this positional vertex and I'm going to normalize it. I'm going to shorten it. I'm going to make it length one. And that's what we'll use for our vertex normal. And when we do that, the resulting vector for all three of these vertices, the resulting normal vector, will come straight out like that. You can imagine all these surface normals coming straight out. Instead of having a defined surface normal perpendicular to the surface that it's on, instead we have these surface normals coming diagonally out because I'm using these positional vertex vertices and normalizing them and I'm going to use them as a surface normal. Now most geometries you can't do this with, but cubes and spheres and things that are centered around their origin and their primitives we can use their positional vertices, normalize them, and get these, these angles. How is that going to change the scene here? I want you to think, how is it going to change our nice hard edges? I probably just gave it away talking about the hard edges. What's going to change about our edges? Recall there's a light out here. That light has to shine down. Well, that's not very good. Here's the light. It's shining down, and we calculate the lighting per fragment based on the dot product between the surface normals and the light position. How is that going to change things? Pause the video and think about that. I'm going to actually go to our code here. You know what? Before we go to our code, let me run this. I'm going to get Windows Snipping Tool and just save this away so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. There we go. It is saved away. And then let's go in here and over here. And I don't have to change my vertex data to accomplish this. What I really need to do is just take this vertex position and model space. You'll see I threw the four on here, even though we're not passing four components in. We get that nice one value for the homogeneous. I'm going to come down to our normal model here. This is where we get the normal. We take the normal from the vertice. Instead of using the normal model, I'm going to use the vertex position and model space. Uh, that is a VEC4, so I no longer need to widen this to a VEC4 anymore. And I'm just going to simply say normalize the vertex position and model space. Control F5 before I do that. Pause the video. Think how's the image going to change? Control F5. And do you see a difference? Do you see a difference? Let me get our snip up. Here's the snip. Here's our new version. Snip. New version. Snip. New version. What happened to the edges? Consider what happens to our dot products. I'll put the I don't know, the light. We'll put the light right there. I'm guessing it's out here somewhere. I, I positioned it roughly out there. We have a light vector. As we calculate with our diffuse light, we have a light vector. And then we have a surface normal vector. We'll do in yellow here. The surface normal coming straight out. 
And for this surface, I'm using this exact same surface normal. Oh, for this surface, I'm using that exact same surface normal. Hey, for this surface, I'm using that exact same surface normal. For this point on the cube, the dot product for all of those surfaces will yield the same cosine result. So that causes, basically causes that corner of the cube to get vaporized or to be vaporized away because now we don't have different dot products for different surface normals. Anyway, something I want to... I wanted to point out to you, it's critical. These surface normals are critical because they determine our lighting. And in 3D modeling programs, it's very often for an artist to tweak these surface normals how they want to achieve whatever lighting result they they would they like. You can tweak the surface normals. Even if the surface normals aren't physically correct, you can do whatever you want and, and make your scene light however you like. So there you go.